Okay, so today I find myself with a little extra time on my hands, and I figured what better way to um, spend it than to produce a little extra bonus of C Talk, a little extra bonus program, as if, you know, more of something that's probably not worth watching in the first place can possibly be called a bonus. But be that as it may, I figured that I would do something a little bit different, so I dressed up in my bathing suit, and I'm going to recite um, Act 5, Scene 1 of Shakespeare's The Tempest. Why, you might ask? Well, it occurred to me that, I don't know, like maybe you're sitting there looking at your computer, and like, I don't know, like somebody walks in, your girlfriend or your wife, or your boss, and they're like, Jim, what in the world are you looking at? And you can be like, like what? What? It's Shakespeare. I'm watching someone recite Act 5, Scene 1 of The Tempest. And they'll be like, oh, I thought you were watching some, some silly transvestite in their underwear. And you can just look like really superior and cool. You say, no. It's an Act 5, Scene 1 of The Tempest. It's an avant garde production. The transvestites and sissies and stuff. So, um, there you go. I'm always concerned with my viewers and keeping their reputation intact so they don't get into any trouble. And, um, so, so sit back and, um, you know, here we go. Hunter Prospero in his magic robes with staff and Ariel. Prospero. Now does my project gather to a head. My charms crack not, my spirits obey. And time goes upright with his carriage. How's the day? Ariel, on the sixth hour, at which time, my lord, you said our work should cease. Prospero, I did say so, when first I raised the tempest. Say, my spirit, how fares the king and his followers? Ariel, confined together in the same fashion as you gave in charge. Just as you left them, all prisoners, sir, they cannot budge till you release. The king, his brother, and yours abide, all three distracted, and the remainder mourning over them, brim full of sorrow and dismay. But chiefly, him that you term sir, the good old Lord Gonzalo, his tears run down his beard like winter's drops from eaves of reeds. Your charm strongly works him, that if you now behold, then your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine word, sir, were I human. And mine shall, as thou which art but air, a touch, a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself. One of their kind, that relish all as sharply, passionate as they are, be kindlier removed than thou art, though with their noble wrongs, their high wrongs, I am struck to the quick, yet with my nowhere reason, gets my fury, do I take part, no rarer action is in virtue, in vengeance. Hmm. Well, you know, you get the idea. Um, and this is like the avant-garde part, you know? Like, you know, when I do like stuff like this, and, you know, like touch myself and stuff, and talk about, um, oh, but I would love to get on my knees and suck your dick, Prospero, and then you can switch me round and fuck me off the ass. It would be such a wonderful experience. I should see angels, my dear lord. You know, like, etc. Oh, I don't know. It's so stupid. But anyway, if somebody walks in there, like, this is what you can say. You can say, oh, fuck, oh, it's just Shakespeare. Um, okay, so, um, that is your special bonus edition of Sissy Talk for today. And, um, 